Hi there, Physically Debunked here. Whether or not a god exists is of huge importance to how we should live our lives. If you're going to mould your entire lifestyle around a particular belief, you'd better have a good reason for believing it. So with this in mind, what is the best reason, the best argument in favour of God's existence? Different people will have different arguments that they think are the best, or some people may think that all the arguments are so bad that none of them deserve to be called the best. In any case, today I'll be looking at the argument that Cameron Bertuzzi of Capturing Christianity thinks is the best argument for God's existence. Could this argument provide a sufficient reason to believe in such a life-altering religion? Let's find out. In your opinion, what is the best argument for God's existence? Yeah, so this is a, a personal question for me because about, well, about a year ago at this point, I was going through some serious doubts about God's existence, the arguments for God, and I wasn't really sure that there was a good argument for God's existence. And I came across the work of a guy named Joshua Rasmussen, who I've had on my channel a bunch, and he, I, I found out that he has a version of the argument from contingency that is really, really strong. And to me, it's rationally unassailable. Like you can't get past it. It's just that good. Rationally unassailable. Hmm. Now, this is a bit of a tangent, but something that bugs me quite a lot about apologists is their certainty. If you take a look at the paper, Cosmological Arguments from Contingency, by Joshua Rasmussen, the guy that Bertuzzi is crediting with this contingency argument, you'll find that throughout the paper there are all sorts of reasonable objections to the various ingredients that make up contingency arguments. And this is the nature of honest academia. It's rare that anything is ever rationally unassailable, and it's rare that there aren't a wide variety of possible explanations for any particular observation. Even if you think the contingency argument is strong, it's nowhere near rationally unassailable. And so the basic idea, he starts out with a puzzle. So everything in our experience is a dependent thing. It depends on something else for its existence. You and me are dependent objects. We depend on something else for our existence, our parents. This microphone depended on something else for its existence, the cameras, the lights. Everything we come in contact with on a regular basis is a dependent thing. So the argument starts by talking about dependent things or contingent things and that everything we see in our day-to-day -day experience are these dependent things. Dependent things are objects whose existence has to be explained. If something is dependent, then it could have been the case that that thing might not have existed. So if something dependent exists, then there needs to be an explanation for why that thing does exist when it could not have. That most things we see around us are dependent is generally accepted in philosophy. Ordinary objects like tables and chairs and biological organisms like you and me are all dependent things. It's conceivable that they might not have existed and so an explanation is needed for why they do. Your existence is in part explained by the existence of your parents and the existence of your computer is in part explained by the existence of companies like Microsoft or Apple. The purpose of this setup is to distinguish between two things dependent things and necessary things. Dependent things are those that depend upon something else for their existence. Necessary things, however, are self-supporting. They explain their own existence. In this way, we can separate everything that exists into these two categories, dependent things and necessary things. This is a standard construction in metaphysics and is extremely useful in the philosophy of modality. This doesn't mean, however, that there isn't a huge amount of controversy about these concepts, especially when applied to arguments such as the contingency argument. The first problem with this classification is that we simply have no way of knowing what things are necessary and what things are dependent. You can't look at an object and deduce whether it exists dependently or necessarily. In physics, we can perform experiments to measure the charge or mass of a fundamental particle, but there's no experiment or measurement you can do to deduce whether something is dependent or necessary. All we have to categorise these things is our intuition. We look at an object and wonder how plausible it is that it might not have existed. If we think that there's a strong possibility that that thing might not have existed, then we say that that thing is dependent. On this basis, most philosophers will happily agree that your existence and the existence of the iPhone 
are dependent. But what about more fundamental things? Are the fundamental particles that make up the universe necessary or dependent? What about the quantum fields that produce them? What about the laws of physics? What about the entire universe? People may try and classify these things as necessary or dependent, but it's all just opinion. There's no way to objectively determine which of these things are necessary and which are dependent. But here's the puzzle. So imagine that all of reality fits inside my little phone here. Everything that exists, ex exists in this phone. There can't be an outside explanation that explains all of reality, if that's what this is, right? We're just, we're just pretending. So there can't be an outside explanation of everything that exists. But it, the puzzle arises because everything in our experience is dependent. But you can't get an independent reality, something that has no outside explanation, by just adding up dependent things. This is exactly what I've been talking about. How do you know that everything we see in our experience is dependent? This is certainly not something that everyone agrees on. Sure, most people will agree that all the macroscopic objects that we see in our day-to-day -day lives, tables, books, chairs, beds, are all dependent things. But what about all the other things I've previously mentioned? How do we know that the fundamental particles that make up the universe aren't necessary? How do we know that the space-time that we inhabit doesn't exist necessarily? Most importantly, how can you have any idea whether or not the universe, the entire universe, is necessary or not? This assertion that every entity in our experience is dependent seems to be a central premise of this argument. But it's such a controversial claim. I certainly wouldn't agree with it. So the idea though is that we have this puzzle, everything in our experience is dependent, all of reality is independent. Is it the case that our universe is independent? As I've mentioned several times in other videos, we currently have little idea about whether there's anything existing beyond the Big Bang of our universe. It could be the case that we exist in a multiverse, or there could be some features of our current universe which are relics from previous ones. We simply don't know enough at this stage to say that our universe is totally independent and the sum total of physical reality. So the idea though is that we have this puzzle, everything in our experience is dependent, all of reality is independent. So how do we square these two? How do we, how do we get past that? And the answer that Josh Rasmussen gives is that we have to posit a necessary foundation at the foundation of reality or a necessary thing at the foundation of reality that explains all dependent reality. Now, I do broadly agree with the logic here. If you accept that dependent things require an explanation for their existence, then there's no way you could have an entire reality made up solely of dependent things. If this were the case, then there would be nothing that could explain why the things in that reality existed. There has to be at least one necessary entity, something that couldn't have failed to exist to explain why all the dependent things exist. I agree with the argument that the existence of dependent things requires the existence of something necessary, but there are two problems with using this argument as an argument for the existence of God. For a start, it's not obvious that this argument applies to our universe at all. This argument is only a problem for a reality in which everything that existed was dependent, but we have no idea whether this is the case for our universe. We have no objective way to determine what things are necessary and what things are dependent. So how do we know that there's nothing in our universe that is necessary? It could be the case that the fundamental particles or fundamental entities that make up the universe exist necessarily. Secondly, even if everything in our universe was dependent, I see no reason at all why this argument should lead to the existence of the personal god of theism. The one example we have of something that some people would call necessary is mathematics. Now, it's very controversial whether mathematics can be said to exist at all, but most philosophers are agreed that mathematical truths are necessary in that they explain themselves. If you're willing to admit the possibility that mathematics can be said to exist, then why invent a new necessary entity to explain the universe's existence when we've already got one? Physicist Max Tegmark is the main proponent of what is known as the mathematical universe hypothesis, which says that everything in reality is just a mathematical structure. If this were true, then mathematics would be the necessary entity upon which everything dependent stood. For me, the contingency argument presented leads much more to Max Tegmark's mathematical universe hypothesis than it does to the existence of a divine mind. 
but I wouldn't start saying that this argument has logically unassailably proved that the mathematical universe hypothesis is true. To conclude then, far from being rationally unassailable, I see very little merit in this argument from contingency. While I agree that the existence of dependent things requires the existence of necessary things, I don't see this as a good reason for the existence of God. Using this to argue that God exists assumes that there is nothing in our entire universe which is necessary, but this seems to be a massive claim when we have no way of determining whether something is necessary or dependent. Being based on such an unverifiable categorization means that this argument has very little obvious relevance to our universe. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe for more philosophy, atheism, physics and stuff.